Homelander, what made you decide to join up with Vaughn? A chance to use my gifts to help make the world a better place. Come on in. Not like this can look bad to anyone. The idea is that the outer you will finally match the inner you. Picture the face you want to have. The life you want to have. Just rub that all over your face. Here we go. Fire! How did the idea for The Boys Diabolical came to be? Was it your idea? Was something that Amazon approached you to do? Uh, it came from uh, Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen, uh, who I'd worked with on Invincible, and I've known for uh, a few years now. Uh, they came to me with the idea, and I think, I, I'm not sure if they came up with it, or Eric Kripke, uh, who, I, I'm not sure exactly who came up with the original idea, but, they, but Evan came to me and asked me if I wanted to help produce an anthology series uh, based around The Boys universe, and uh, I was a huge fan of the show, so uh, I was very excited to say yes, and I was just wrapping up the first season of Invincible, so I had some time. So yeah, we just leapt into it right then. It was, uh, I, I was really happy uh, they made that phone call and called me. And you, you always saw it as an, an animation? Well, so we wanted to, we had a couple of restrictions on the show. We had to produce it before season three of The Boys came out. They wanted, Amazon wanted the show to come out in between seasons. Uh, to give some to give the audience something to watch something to get excited about and another part of the boys world before season three came out we were still in the middle of the pandemic uh when we started you know it was the end of last year um or sorry, not last year the year before uh mm -hmm. so doing it animated meant we could just start immediately and we could do it remote and everybody could stay safe and we could start production and we could do it on a on a better budget than if we had to do it live action it just meant we could just go so that was one of the reasons uh, why why we made it animated. Although for future seasons, who knows? Maybe we'll do some live action, some animation. Uh, I think the thing about Diabolical is it should be every episode should be anything anything it can be that suits mm -hmm. the story the best. So, um, do you see it more as a good introduction uh, for to the universe of the boys, or more as something for the the, the fans of the live action to to, to watch? Uh, that's a really good question. I think it probably helps if you've seen some of the boys, uh, because we don't explain a lot of things. We sort of assume that you probably watched a season or two of mm -hmm. the main show. But I hope that there's an episode there that anybody can enjoy, you know, that there's one, you know, I hope they all have a strong emotional story. So even if you don't know all of the details, you can still watch and enjoy and follow these new characters going through the situation they find themselves in. Some of the episodes, because I already saw them, uh, are edgy. Uh, some may even be considered outrageous. Uh, did you have any moments where you thought, oh, this is going too far? <laughs> Almost never. Uh, I think The Boys prides itself on going farther than you think it can, or maybe sometimes it should. Uh, I mean, Aquafina's episode, the whole episode, you, you know, obviously, is about uh, her making friends, finding a new friend. Uh, from deep inside herself, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. you know, uh, I don't think that's for everybody. I don't think everybody's going to necessarily that they, that might not speak to everybody, but I'm really happy. We made it, uh, that came from Aquafina herself. Uh, I'm happy that episode exists. Uh, but no, the Amazon was great. There's no, there, there were no guidelines. They never told us you can't do that or you can't do this. We got to sort of do whatever we thought was best for the story, but I hope, I hope it doesn't feel gratuitous. I hope that all of the times we push those limits and we show you something, it feels like it needs to happen for the story or for that character at that time, rather than us just like throwing blood around just because we can. Uh, how many of these characters were created specifically for the show? Uh, maybe some of them came from the comics. I don't know. I never read, read them. Or maybe they were concepts that were never used on the live action. There's a mixture. So uh, some of them uh, are original for the mm -hmm. series. So like any Sandberg's episode, Uh, every character in that is original to Andy Samberg's and created just for that episode. Uh, Aisha Tyler's episode uh, draws from characters from the comic book who have not appeared in the original te te television series. So Nubian Prince and Nubia are characters from Garth Innes' original books that have just have not appeared in the, in the Mothership show. So we use them. Uh, and then there's obviously characters like we have, uh, you know, Uh, Homelander and the Deep, and we have characters we drew directly from the comic, from the from the television show. So we have all types. We have completely original characters in the comic books, and then characters from the television series. 
when you chose the last the last picking of episodes i'm sure you had a lot more stories than these eight they were that were actually made up uh, to the series how many were left out believe it or not not too many because how we did it is we went out and we approached the people first so uh, originally we wanted to do 10 episodes and then we mm -hmm. found like as our schedule started to come together we realized we didn't have the time to do 10 so we made we dropped it down to eight but we went out to eight writers uh and had them pitch the stories to us so they all came up with the story so believe it or not we didn't actually sit around and come up with like a, like 20 different ideas although i think we, we easily could have uh the ideas came from all of the writers so uh we have lots of other thoughts and things we could do for season two but mostly there's not a lot on the cutting room floor most of the uh, what the writers pitched is what we what we made but all, all episodes have a different art style um did that uh, choice was made at that time as well uh for some episodes it was very early on obviously so like uh evan and seth's episode uh the laser babies day out <laughs> right from the very first conversation we knew we wanted that to be a looney tunes roger rabbit classic cartoon kind of style so that one was set uh we knew justin roiland's episode we wanted that to be like justin roiland's look and his his own drawing style so that was set but some of the others like uh void in 3d you know that one was that took a little bit of exploration and of sort of thinking about what's the best style for this story and you know that led us to like french graphic novels and french illustrations and eventually to french animation like uh triplets of belleville uh by sylvain chomet um and that's what made us decide to go on that south so some happened very early on almost immediately and others we had to discover as we went uh, sorry i need to ask um it uses some of the characters from the live actions as you said uh, can you expect can we expect any time of connection to what's to come in, in season three of the boys obviously uh i mean that's a question for eric kripke who's uh, obviously <laughs> show running and writing season three uh, obviously we took a lot of elements from season three and we put them into diabolical and we sort of hid them in different places uh i think there's a little bit going the other way but uh, i think you have to wait to season three to find out okay uh the boys turned the superhero genre if you can call it that way upside down and it worked um how do you i'm curious to see to, to know your opinion about the future of the the genre the superhero genre in a more broad way yeah that's a good question i mean uh it seems like we can't possibly have any more and yet there's more coming out all the time exactly But people people seem to like it i think as long as um bar for quality is kept very high then it's then it's a good thing it's you know uh obviously you have incredible shows like Watchmen which I think was one of the best mm -hmm. shows of the last couple of years uh you have the boys um you know uh you have all of Marvel's new shows coming out like Hawkeye and uh Moon Knight uh I think as long as there's an audience for it will obviously people will keep on making them I just like to hope that the quality the bar stays high and I think that's what's going to happen is that uh lower quality shows are just going to disappear and get and either disappear or not get made uh so i hope i hope that's the future do you consider yourself a particular fan of any of those more known uh comic book universes if you'd like sure i mean like i like i watch all the marvel movies uh, i was a huge fan of the boys before i came on board uh, i loved preacher uh back uh when that show was on television too uh, i like you know the weirder ones too that are that are, that are coming the tick was great on <laughs> we can tell yeah exactly so but also i i like i i i love it all i read it all you know i'd like to see more indie comments comics get picked up and made into shows that would be nice uh it's the smaller stuff i mean marvel and dis like marvel and dc are doing those things those are things are going to happen anyway so i'd like to see some of the smaller more interesting stories brought up and made into uh television and film i need to ask also uh do you have a favorite episode of these eight and why uh, I can't say they're all my favorite. I love all of them equally. Uh they they make me happy for different reasons. You know, like Aquafina's episode. I'm just happy that exists. Like who else was going to make a show like that? I think it's so crazy and so weird and we got to write uh an a brand new Japanese pop song just for that episode. And then we have like, you know, again Laser Babies stay out. Like we recorded a 29 piece orchestra for the soundtrack for that episode. So I'm so happy I got to do that. And then Annie Sandberg's episode, you know, it's this like heartbreaking 
story about loss that made people cry. I've seen people watch that episode and cry, which I think is, you know, tremendous achievement for, for Andy's script. So I love them all for many different reasons.